Hey, how's it going all? Just wanted to do a quick lesson on Freemasonry. So I saw a documentary on Netflix um, on, in, you know, I think it's called Inside the Freemasons and it's it's one of the lodges in England. And uh, the first episode, which I watch most of, you know, a young guy is, you know, um, getting inducted into Freemasonry, going through the very first initial steps. And his dad is a Freemason, so I, you know, I have a feeling that's, that's the way it works. And, um, you know, it's either like very close family members are allowed to like you know bring new people in or um you know i guess people that that they work with and have been very very comfortable with i have a feeling it's it's not a very easy process to get you know um introduced to it and, and inducted into it but they don't necessarily go into into the selection criteria and process but you know it's interesting to look at um you know inside of a lodge and like you know you see the black and white masonic tiles and um you know you if you if you've lived in like New York City apartments, I remember the one that I lived in in East Harlem. There were black and white tiles, you know, in the main in the main area. And um, I also mentioned that I was in room six of one of my apartments, and it was uh, the number six 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 was on the door. Six written three times, even though it was apartment six. Um, and every other apartment only had the number written twice. So, you know, there there's uh, there their um, influence is is everywhere, and so. It was it was interesting now seeing their stuff on Netflix. Things are becoming more and more mainstream. It's it's harder to hide um, their influence, care of Russian vids and and channels like him, um, bringing out you know the patterns and the, the the numerology and all that kind of stuff. But just want to make a couple points that uh, one that I learned from Russian vids is like when you see your um, graduation cap, you know I'm just looking at one right now on Google Images, you know these. These masons are essentially, you know, in charge of housing certain truths or certain lies, you know, and, um, you know, distributing that, you know, as, as a mix uh, or pure lies or, or truth in plain sight um, that most people won't get. So they're basically like they're sort of artificially mind controlling all of us, you know, and in some some way that uh, even those who are, quote unquote, awake might still not know, you know, certain things that we just don't know. Um, you know about our reality but we're starting to like understand more and more and flat earth is definitely a major revelation that helps to uh, zero in on the points of deception but you know the the, Mas the these graduation hats are basically like little like masonic um, you know architecture or um, you know builders um, uh, tools you know like that they will like put different you know clay or cement on um, you know, before that they're applying it, you know, to, to whatever they're building. And so you can see that, you know, that uh, the flat part is the actual tool that they'll use to like, you know, how is whatever, you know, um, material they're, gonna, they're using to like, um, you know, spread, you know, along the wall or whatever. And um, the actual like putty, the, the, the material that they're molding in the case of this graduation hat <clears throat> is that little, you know, thing that our head will go under. And so it's kind of like, inferring that our brain is essentially under their control you know our brain our mind is like the clay uh, that they're using to like you know um create whatever they're they're building you know and so it's like it's an analogy but it fits very very well you know like they're actually building uh, creating you know realities within our mind and and that's that's their job to, is to do that is to essentially mold and and um you know create um you know, truths and, and falsities, um, you know, that live in our mind and then influence the things that we do. And so, you know, not just them, but all the groups that are associated with them and, and aligned with them, you know, are involved in it. It's, it's not just them that would be able to do this, but, um, you know, we see that they have control over a lot of these things. And so the interesting thing I think about Freemasonry is that it's to me a way that God will dispense ideas and truths, you know, but he'll, he'll need to hide them. Cause like just from a very practical perspective, like if we were born and then as soon as we could sort of understand our surroundings, we absolutely knew for certain that God exists. In my opinion, we would be overwhelmed. Like if we actually like knew that, knew that and um, our brain could understand that uh, fully. I mean, I don't see the point of, of living, you know, like well, what, what are we, what are we going to do? We're going to sit and toil for our whole life, you know, just so we can die um, and maybe, you know, own our home and have a career and, whatever like it doesn't make sense you know to me it's like god has to like reveal himself in different ways and and reveal truth slowly and subtly or else we'd be overwhelmed and so they're using he's using freemasons as just one group to do that to orchestrate that and um 
you know, we see these truths coming out, um, you know, in, in pretty like, you know, strong, uh, pretty, pretty strong gushes, you know, now with, with again, flat earth and, and the chip and, you know, the lies in the mainstream media and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's an amazing thing, you know, they, that they house these things, but to me, like also the, from a very like earthly perspective, the way I see the, the Freemasons are like just the, the pride that they have in certain things that they know. And that even if it's just simple handshakes and code words and stuff, like if you don't have like certain, like, you know, spiritual truths or like truths, you know, about God and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, one way to, to create, you know, truth or, uh, is to like make lies, you know, cause whenever you have lies, you have the reciprocal of that. You have truth, you know, existing. And so it housed somewhere. And so to me, I see the Freemasons as a group who are creating, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, lies through like these hoaxes and these shootings and all that kind of stuff. And just through like random news stories that are just not true, you know, and, and may not even serve a purpose for anything, but just the fact that they can get away with it. And so, but they have then a group that will know the truth, you know, that that was fake, that was real, this is, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so even in the markets too, it's like all these different jitters in the markets, they don't make any sense, you know, it's like certain random things and allegations and, you know, Elon Musk, you know, smoking a joint, you know, the stock drops and all, it doesn't make any sense, like it's absolutely moronic. And um, by the way, Elon Musk is EM, which is 33, um, and his wife, uh, sorry, his mom, I believe, is is MM, uh, which is also 33. And so, you know, they're they're all tied to Freemasonry, whether they, they know it or not. And then Freemasons report to some other entity, I suspect, on Earth. And then all of that rolls up to, to God. And so, you know, this is just something that I wanted to bring out about the Freemasons. I mean, they look like clowns, to be honest. Like, they just look ridiculous with their outfits. Like, they look like they're wearing a skirt, you know, and like all they're really proud of their badges and like you know all this stuff it's just like it's literally like a circus to me it's like insane you know that someone would um you know be interested in some of the rituals that they do are, are really weird so it's just more and more evidence that this world has gone completely insane like full full retard um the people that house certain truths and are in charge of hiding certain things are like you know just weird they're just odd people and um so, you know, we have we have these guys and, uh, you know, they claim to like believe in a supreme being, but, you know, with with their, um, you know, main function is to deceive, you know, we obviously know that, that that's not true, but they, they probably they, they probably know that, you know, God exists. And I remember watching a KRS one um, explanation of Freemasonry, and um, I'll put the link in the description and in particular this point that he makes that Freemasons started out as literally like masons like people who built things but like incorporated spiritual ideas into it like shipbuilding and stuff like that and i wouldn't be surprised if that's true because like they would have had to have been productive in society they couldn't always just like wear skirts and do chants and all that kind of stuff they these people have some of them have actual jobs that are not just to support the the lodges and stuff that they congregate at so but he did mention you know like they do have certain truths you know but they're they're not allowed to like explicitly say it um, or they will explicitly say it, but they know that most people won't get it. And one example that he talked about was like, you know, shipbuilders who will like, you know, name their boats, you know, a certain way. But, um, you know, also like nursery rhymes, like, um, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And we will sing that, you know, as a young child, I remember hearing that at least. And we wouldn't, now to me, it, it is a way to like, understand esoteric concepts because to me this whole existence is god is a dream that that god is having it's it's very real obviously to us like we experience things and feel pain and all that so it's very real and it uh, doesn't feel like a simulation but to me it's the only only explanation of of what we live in and uh you know like and and i think our when we have dreams it's a, it's a way of god giving us some way to understand you know what he's capable of and so when we have a dream we wake up, we go into like sort of a quote unquote unconscious state. And then we have certain things that, um, you know, may or may not relate to like what we've been doing that day or recently, but there's characters doing things. They have a script, they're saying, they're talking and, um, you know, they're, they're allowed to kind of speak freely. We didn't like think of what they're about to say before we went to bed. So it's kind of unscripted, but, um, but it also is like sometimes dependent on, you know, our life 
and things that we've experienced or things that we've been thinking about um, or worried about. And so, but it, you know, it, but it feels very real. And a lot of times we can wake up and still remember them or at least remember, you know, the, the main parts, like scary parts, high, the highs, the lows or whatever, some, some portions of it. And so to me, this is like a, a bit of an analogy of what happens with God is that we are, you know, characters in his mind, in a, in his, in a dream, um, that, uh, that he has scripted, but we feel like we have freedom to like say and do whatever we want, even though he's the one who's ultimately housing this, um, this quote unquote thought experiment or the simulation. And so, and he's able to remember the things that he wants to remember, you know, like, and, and we talk, and the Bible talks about, you know, our sins being forgiven, you know, for those who, who God chooses to forgive. And he's able to like somehow kind of forget, you know, just like we're able to like forget certain details, you know, and even people who've gone through traumatic experiences, you know, are able to, to forget certain things, but also, you know, like remember them, you know, very vividly and, and all that kind of stuff. They're able to have some control over what, what they remember and what details. And so to me, that's an analogy. Obviously, I don't know the way this works, you know, in, in God's mind, that's impossible for me to know. But um, to me, it's like, it's like an analogy, you know, and this, this is, again, like maybe if uh, KRS-One was saying that, you know, that was a, inspired by Freemasonry and stuff. And, you know, it, it makes sense. So like, you know, they, they do have certain truths, you know, it's not always obvious, um, you know, what, what is the truth and what is not coming from them, because, you know, now we know that um, we're skeptical, you know, the things that they say, but it's kind of interesting, you know, the way that God is given, the, the God would have to give the left-hand side some truth, or else they would have really no power, because, like, we would just be able to verify it pretty much immediately, and then um, know that, that it's false, so, like, they would have to kind of cloak it, um, you know, the truth in some kind of or sorry, cloak, cloak the falseness in truth or else, you know, uh, we, we would just, we would not be able to believe it. And so like the ball earth was cloaked in just having a mass amount of people push it. You know, that's one of the main things and just have that be sort of the standard. So God would need, you know, a few hundred years of this stuff to develop before people on earth now who, who pursue truth could fall for it. You know, if like ball earth just came up like, in my lifetime or like within the last five or 10 years, I mean, we could go quickly and immediately check the sources and see what, you know, developed it. But um, the fact that it's been around for a few hundred years and then everybody living now has experienced it fully, you know, in its sort of full bloom for generations that allowed it to, to succeed. So he gives, you know, the falsities like a chance, you know, to, to survive, you know, or else they would just be ineffective. And so thankfully we're at that time now where he's, uncovering this, um, you know, and um, not, it's, I'm not just putting this on the Freemasons, obviously it's not just them, there's a whole orchestrated group, they just are, they're just one group that I feel like God is allowing us to identify um, with the encoding and the numerology and stuff like that. So you'll see the, the, the letter G quite a bit. And so G is the number 33 in the alphabet. If you take the full alphabet and then wrap the number around again, and then when you get to A, you add one number onto the end of the alphabet and then B, add two, and then when you get to G, you'll get to 33. And so um, you'll see G and 33, you know, interchangeable uh, all over the place. And, and 666 is also associated with, um, with that, you know, encoding. And then again, Russian Vids does an amazing job at that. And uh, you should check out his channel. And I put a few videos up. Now that I know that this is happening, I see it everywhere, like celebrities' names, people in the news, even watching like uh, forensic files and like shows like that, you start to see 33 encoded all over the place. And so once you look out for it, you start to see like it's, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. And, it, and that would be a massive coincidence if, you know, the Bible just happened to pick, you know, numbers like that, that sort of worked out. But um, we know that the number has a meaning and, um, you know, God is very precise, you know, with, um, with his encoding. And, and God is ultimately doing this. We have to give credit where credit is due. There is no way an entity outside of God could orchestrate all of this. Like, that's just, that's just insane to believe that. You know, there is no way generationally uh, it could be passed down. There's no way that license plates, you know, could be encoded with 33, you know, and all this stuff hidden in movies and, and all that. This, this was a mastermind that did this. You know, this is no way a human, a group of humans could get together and create this and have it you know, sustain itself and, and be as kind of subtle um, as it is. 
um, but but allow it to also be obvious to others. Like it, it doesn't make any sense. So you know, give credit again where credit is due. God gets credit for the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um, one of you know the the main deceptive branches on the earth right now is a group called the Freemasons.